What's going on, people? Welcome to another episode of the Off the Ball Podcast with me, your host, Chris LeBron. And on today's show, I'm going to keep doing what I've been doing with these NBA draft prospect profiles. And this is my third edition of this show. And, and I'm uh, I'm super grateful to have uh, this individual on. He's uh, he's just been, he's been an ascending player since his freshman year, and uh, I'm, I'm just super excited to get to talk to him. Leslie Vard the second from Texas Rio Grande Valley. What's going on, my man? Nothing much, man. Just out here surviving, taking it one day at a time. Yeah, yeah. You know, obviously, so much craziness going on in the world. But uh, I'm, like I said, happy to have you on. So just talk to me about, you know, what you've been doing to to prep yourself, getting ready for the draft. Because, you know, the draft is, it's had a lot of different days. It was supposed to, you know, it's usually around, you know, coming up. And now it's been, it's been, uh, post, you know, postponed to a later date. So how have you been able to, you know, get yourself ready and make sure that, you know, you know, you're ready to go. Yeah. Well, at first, since the gyms were closed down, I just happened to keep that same routine that I do in the gym, but just find the outside court and just do it there, along with just making sure I'm staying in shape and using resistant bands since the weight rooms haven't been open, mm -hmm. just to do different exercises as far as that, just to stay on, on, on task. And in a little bit, I'll be going out to train in Oregon in the next couple of weeks. So that's, that's going to be my, a big in my uh, process right now also. Oh, so you're going to go to Oregon to train more? Yeah. Okay. Awesome, awesome, awesome. So I, I like to talk to uh, about guys about, you know, their journey and, you know, how they got to where they got. And just talk to me a little bit. I mean, you're from Texas, you know. Mm -hmm. So talk to me about, you know, you're obviously you were probably a ball, you know, you were probably the best player on your team in high school. <laughs> and, you know, so talk to me about that process and, and getting recruited and, and that mm -hmm. whole process and then picking the school you, you, you're, you're going, you went to. Uh -huh. So, I, I mean, I'm, from, I'm a kid just from Cedar Hill, which is inside of Dallas. So I went to Cedar Hill High School for my senior year. And it was just, it was a great time. I was there with a lot of my friends. We got better day by day as guys I grew up pooping with. And one of them in North Texas, Zachary Simmons. And, you know, I just grinded. And Coach Hill seen me, like, kind of towards the end of the year for Rio Grande Valley. He seen me play for an unsigned senior team for Showtime, Dallas Showtime. And when I was on there, he just told me, just, you know, keep playing. And, man, we want you really bad. He came out and seen me play. And he was talking about how good I shot the ball and how well I, my perimeter game was for my size and things of that sort. So I just felt like going to Rio Grande Valley was the best situation for me. Okay, cool. Would you yeah. get any other offers or was it? Uh, it was either between. Offer. Yeah, I had my first offer was actually from Arkansas Pound Bluff. I'm very, I was very slept on. I didn't really get a bunch of offers like other guys. Mm -hmm. But I had UC Riverside, and then I had Pound Bluff, and I had a lot of HBCU schools looking at me. Okay, yeah. Cool. So talk to me about the transition because you go from high school. Obviously, you know high school. You go yeah. to college is a big difference. I mean, I know from experience too, going to high school to college. But going from high school where you're the guy, and then going to college <laughs> where now it's a different, you know, it's, um, it's a different atmosphere. And now you're not, you're probably not playing, you're not playing as much. So how do you, how do you make sure that, how did you make sure that you didn't get, you know, get down on yourself or think about, oh man, maybe this is the wrong choice. I should have went uh, somewhere else. How do you, how did you make sure that you kept focused on like, okay, my time's going to come, you know, and, and just kept grinding? Man, what you just said is so true. When you go to college and you, man, you just another fish in the, in the tank. <laughs> in high school, it's like, oh, I'm the big fish. And when you go to mm -hmm. college, kind of even scale, you got to work your way up in most cases. So that's just what I did. I found my niche in different ways, which I just found it defensively, which I've kind of grown to be really good at. Mm -hmm. And since then, my coach here told me just to play defense and you'll keep moving up in a roster spot. And as I kept playing defense, I progressed my offensive game and just let it rise to the occasion. Yeah, I mean, defense, yeah. if you can play defense, you're always going to get nowhere. Yeah. I mean, I know I, I wasn't obviously nowhere near the high school player you were, but I know, <laughs> you know, I wasn't the greatest offensive player, but I knew if I were defense, I'm going to get on the court. So Yeah, uh, that's true. <laughs> but, uh, but uh, you know, so obviously, you know, your, your freshman year, and then when did you realize, okay, my game's starting to come together. Like, I'm going to finally understand. Because obviously, it's a huge transition, you know. You're mm -hmm. young and, and all that, and it's a big transition from you. So when did you realize, okay, I'm, I'm finally getting used to this you know, college type, ba college basketball, and I'm understanding you know, everything, school and all that. When did you finally feel comfortable, you know, with your game and everything else? I would say my junior year is when I felt like I could take this to the next level. And I just gained that confidence and, and just knew it from there on out. Yeah. 
That's good. That's good. That's good that you realize that because some guys will take some guys take forever. You know, they might never realize it because I'm sure. I mean, it's five stars that never figure it out. You know. Yeah. Yeah, so, that's, true. that's true. So obviously, this year was was just crazy. You know, obviously with the COVID and all that. And were you guys getting ready for a conference tournament when everything oh, yeah. started going? So, yeah, we definitely were. So obviously you're being a senior and all that and, you know, not getting an opportunity to, you know, because obviously you, if you know you win, you win your conference, you get an automatic bid and you get a chance mm-hmm. to play in the tournament. And, you know, anything can happen. You know, we just saw a 16 beat a one. So, you know, uh-huh. it happened. So I just talked about like you being a senior, you know, finally, you know, you, you're playing at a tremendous level, you know, you're, you're, you're playing great. And then, bam, everything's, that's it. It's over. Just like that. And you don't yeah. get to finish out your senior year. And just talk to me about how difficult that was. I mean, that was that was kind of devastating just because I mean you're a senior and 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 just things are sort of little invitational tournaments that you get invited to after the season as seniors that I got invited to, I couldn't attend. And that was big on my thing. I was like, wow, I kind of wanted to go to this all year, even my mm-hmm. junior year, I finally get invited, and boom, I can't go because of the epidemic. But I mean, you kind of bounce back from it and learn just everything happened for a reason. But, I mean, at first, we, we were in Las Vegas getting ready for our WAC tournament, and we practiced the day prior to at UNLV, thinking, getting ready for the game the next day. And then, boom, in the morning time, our coach calls us down for breakfast and tells us, like, hey, they're canceling the tournament because of coronavirus. I mean, thank you, seniors, for everything. And just, you know, that's all. Yeah, I mean, that, that was just – I mean, being a fan, I know that's devastating, but I can imagine for you being senior and, and for your teammates, you know, and for a lot of guys, you know, not being able to play on that, that big stage. You, know, you, you see those guys have taken their – you know, that, that might have not been on the radar as far as the draft, yeah. just to elevate yeah. their game, just in, in conference play, not alone the, the tournament. So I'm sure – yeah, And that was the plan. That's what we were yeah, trying to yeah. do. Yeah. Yeah, and I'm sure you know uh, that's you know that's that's just sucks, you know? and I feel I I really felt bad for all all especially the seniors that you know you, you worked your whole you worked all four years to get to this spot and then damn it, it just got taken away and, and yeah. that that really sucked. But you know yeah. you you were all whack first team, you mm-hmm. know? so just you yeah. know talk to me about that. You know being all whack. I mean that must have been like from where you came from, from your freshman year. And I love to be, you know, all first team all whack. Just talk to me about that and that feeling. Uh, oh, that was big also because, I mean, that's something a, a kid always grows up to want to be a D1 player and let alone all conference team, first team. So, I mean, my coaches just always told me since my junior year that, hey, man, you're a senior, you could be a breakout year and you could get on that all conference team. So I took that mindset going into my junior year summer and then just progressed from there and, when I found out, I was just like, oh, thank you, Coach, you was right. <laughs> I put in that work, and it's starting to pay off. That's cool. That's cool. So I want to go back a little bit. When did you first realize, like, okay, I'm, I'm kind of good at ball, like, and I could yeah. possibly play at, you know, a D1, D1 level college basketball? You know, when, when was yeah. that first realization? I ain't going to lie. My first realization is when we played Sam Houston at our, um, at our court, and I had, I think, like 33 and 13. And that's when I realized, okay, that was a pretty tough game. Like, and then from there, I just kind of just started realizing I could do it and take off from there. Nice, nice, nice. So how are you going about the whole draft process right now? Like how, you know, as far as representation, what are they doing to try to make sure, you, you know, you're in the right, you know, you're going to the right places, your, tra- your training's all right, and you're, you're ready to, you're prepared. Uh, they're making sure on the back end that everything's like taken care of and make sure I'm in the right predicament and a, right, a great situation for me and make sure just my name gets out there as much as possible and I'm put in a situation to be showcase my skills in front of people who can get me uh, to the, where I need to be. Okay. Have you heard from teams? You know, obviously, I'm sure it's tough with not being able to go to team. Usually you go to, you know, you get private workouts with teams and uh-huh. talk to them. Obviously, we can't do that right now. So how, so have you heard from teams? Have they talked to your representation? How, how yeah. Is that? yeah, I've talked to, I've talked to uh, a good few of teams and they've talked to my representation. And have you got some good feelings? Like, okay, I could, I could hear my name. Like, as, as yeah, yeah, yeah. And they I'm sure out, they reached out pretty early. Like, in, back, like after this Corona happened, and they ended the season like about a month after, like around April. Then that's when I they started kind of calling my coaches, and then took it from there. But they started calling in like April. Okay, that's. I mean, I'm sure that's 
that's you know this is your dream i'm sure that hearing that that you could possibly hear your name getting called you know yeah. i'm sure you're ecstatic about that you know uh, you know especially playing in a low a low you know a, a low you know a low conference in a low in mm -hmm. school that's not a big name you know to yeah. you know to, to know that okay man i came from where i came from and then you know paying for a small school and then I can hear my name getting called. That's yeah. crazy. I mean, I'm yeah, sure that's crazy. that's crazy, you know, so, uh, you know, I, I'm, you know, I'm rooting for you big time as far as that. So what do you feel like, what are things you feel like you, that you have to work on in order to, you know, uh, you know, take that next level and, and be ready to play in the league? Uh, I always just wanted to continue to get stronger and get that size of the league. I feel like I could play at the pace right now, but I need to also just work, tap in and just polish my ball handle a little bit get used to the NBA line, which I'm doing right now, and I'll be ready to go. Okay, so is there anyone you're looking forward to going, like, you know, defending? Who's, who's, who's one person that you're like, I can't wait to get to, to guard him? Oh, you're talking about this in the league right now? Yeah, if you're, if you're getting the league, and who, who's that one dude you're looking forward to? You're like, okay, all right. I'm, I've been looking forward to this my whole life. And, and damn. Man, I ain't even going to lie to you. I want to see what it's like guarding Kevin Durant, man. <laughs> He's so good, man. How, how would you even defend a guy like that who's six, you know, seven foot and could shoot, you know, and, and you're tall. I mean, you're six, seven, right? Yeah. You're, yeah. you're a tall dude. So, but uh, he, the way he shoots, it's like, <laughs> it's impossible. How, how would you even guard a guy like that? Man, I'm going to just have to get into him because I know his shot is so crisp and he's knocked down from three. So I'm going to just have to get into him and make him work for whatever he gets. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Kevin Durant's cold. So, who who are some of the guys that you looked up when 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 you were growing up? Who was your who's some of your favorite guys? My favorite, uh, like historical guy, I would say is Larry Bird. But as of recently, my favorite guys to watch is Kawhi Leonard and oh, wow. Ke and Kevin Durant also. Yeah, and they're both two way players too. And and you're you're a two way player too. I mean, you keep yeah. and you you keep improving with your game, which is which is you know what probably scouts love that you give yeah. and you have the size too. You're in six seven, mm -hmm. but you're like two ten around there. Yeah. So you got the size and the length, man. People are, they're gonna love that. They love those three yeah. three and D type players, especially in today's yeah. league where there's a whole bunch of those guys. So, but uh, yo, uh, so what do you what do you what's how does it feel to, you know, graduate? I mean, you graduated and all that. Just talk about all that, you know, getting to graduate, obviously under different circumstances, but, you know, first congratulations on graduating and all that. Thank you. Just talk to me about that, that feeling of, you know, finally graduating. Oh, that was a, that was a marvelous, it was a great feeling to have and just that accomplishment for myself. That's something a kid always wants to do is graduate. Not many get to do it also, so it's a, it's a big accomplishment. And I'm just glad I got to do that for my family. And also, you know, mom always talk about make sure you get that degree. So boom, I have it now. And, you know, that was a great feeling. Although we didn't get the walk and things, but I still, you know, took a couple graduation pictures. So yeah, cool. yeah, yeah. That's cool. yeah. I saw some pictures on, on your Twitter and stuff. But like I said, <laughs> congratulations on that. But, you know, so, so like who, who do you, whose game do you try to emulate after? Is there, is there a, someone that you, you know, the player that you see that, okay, I, I, I like, I want to kind of play, not, kind of play like him, but like, who do you try to like steal, you know, moves and, and try to like put your game around? See, I, I'm, I steal the moves from a lot of, from everybody. It's just like, <laughs> whenever I watch basketball and I see a move, I go back at it and kind of just rewind it and kind of study that move, that particular move I've seen. But in the NBA, I would say, I'll get a lot, I'll get a little dab in here from like Kawhi Leonard, Kevin Durant and, and even the smaller guys, just to see how they create their shot, like a Steph Curry, just to see how he creates his shots and do those type of things. And and how do you figure out what works and, and what works for you and what, you know, I, okay, I, I can't do this, you know, this particular move set. I, that's not going to be, how do you, how do you decipher like, okay, I'm going to try to work this more into my game and I'm going to try to, you know, maybe not do that so much. How do you decipher that? Mm -hmm. I feel like just when you have a, a foundation of where your game is, you can just kind of know what you can do from there. So if you like shoot mid-range shots and you shoot it well in the game and you don't shoot the three so good, then you just practice on it more on your off time to, to make that rise to the occasion to be evenly with your mid-range shot. Yeah, yeah, true. Yeah. But uh, so you get to the league, let's say you get to the league, what's, you know, what do you think that feeling is going to be to, you know, hear your name and know that, you know, I'm an NBA player now. What's going to be that feeling? I feel like it'll be the same as everybody else. It'll be just so surreal. It'll just be so shocking. But it'll be a dream come true. Is is there anywhere you want? Do you want to stay in Texas? You want to play for one of those Texas teams, Dallas Antonio? Or are you like, oh, wherever I go is wherever I go? 
I mean, who, whichever team believes in me, I'm I'm happy to be there. <laughs> it don't yeah, even yeah. matter to me. The Knicks could use you, man. We could use a lot. So maybe <laughs> we could. Yeah. Get, you're the perfect player they actually need. We need a player like you. So maybe they, yeah. need, if someone in the second round, they can, uh, they, they can look at you. But, uh, you know, uh, so I want to ask you a few questions before I let you go. You know, I appreciate you all your time. But uh, when was the first time you dunked? In the game? In the game, yeah. In the game, I would say my first time dunking was. Oh, oh, whenever, whenever, what was the first time you dunked in, at any age? Okay, I, my first time dunking was ninth grade summer, and my first time dunking in the game was 10th grade. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> and how was that feeling? Because you know, that's always, that's always everyone, everyone remembers their first dunk, I'm sure. I never dunked, so I'll never get to that feeling, other than two kids. Yeah. But how was that, how was that feeling, knowing that? I was I've been dunked on, one. I've been dunked on, but <laughs> I've never dunked on. Uh, no, nah, it was a great feeling just to know I got that dunk. And then my brother used to always kind of clown me like, hey, you because he was dunking before me. And like, hey, you need to be dunking. Mm -hmm. So he was in the stands when I got it. So I just dunked in and looked at him and like, there you go right there. <laughs> <laughs> That's dope. What's the most points you scored in, in, in uh, at any level? I would say the most points I scored is 30, 33 points 30, in a game. 30, yeah. 33 points, okay. That's good. How many threes? It oh, I, I've hit like six six threes one time in a game right? okay yeah yeah okay so who's who's uh who's the best player in the league right now in the nba the best player in the nba right now i'm gonna still have to give it to the king, the king. LeBron. <laughs> i think it's crazy how his longevity he's been yeah and he's been around you know he's been you know, on top, you know, since 16 years old, he's been in the limelight. And now the closest, the closest I would say is Kawhi Leonard, though. Kawhi? Kawhi is yeah. good, too. And he's, like I said, a two-way player that does everything. Mm -hmm. uh, who's your Mount Rushmore? Uh, I would say AD. I would say AD. AD? Anthony Davis, yeah. Anthony Davis is on your Mount Rushmore? Who else? Yeah. Uh, Giannis. 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 Giannis, Giannis, is, Giannis is good. Yeah, Giannis is tough. I'm gonna have to go with. Uh, see, I like Demar Derozan also. Though. Demar Derozan's and his yeah. mid range game is, is tremendous. Yeah, yeah, I like, I like his, his mid range game. game said. And then, man, I'm gonna have to go with KD also, man. I KD. can't throw KD out the yeah. <laughs> It's gonna be fun to see KD come back, from, yeah. and you know, you might have to guard him. You know, the first game of the year, or whatever team you go on. But yeah. uh, you know, so. If you when you talk to when you get to talk to a, a, a GM, a, you know VP, whoever, coach, what's the one thing you tell them about you and what you can bring to their team? Uh, I'm just, I'm just a hard worker, and all the little things that God was what don't want to do that I'll do, and I'll also just bring a little bit more also to the table, and, which is my game. Awesome, awesome, yeah. But uh, Leslie, man, I, I appreciate you coming on the show. You know, uh, it's 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 uh, you know I, I, this was fun. And I'm rooting for you big time. You know, uh, I'm hope I hit to hear your name. You know, whenever I don't even know what the day the draft is, they keep pushing you back. But whenever they, they call, I'm I'm gonna root for you big time because uh, I've seen your highlights. I love your highlights. I think you're definitely gonna fit right into the league. So, uh, you know, continue success. And uh, like I said, I'm rooting for you big time, man. All right, thanks, and thank you for having me. No doubt, man. Take care. All right. All right. Yes.